Hi folks, it's me Don Ruler with another video blog. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while on solo training, but recent events have made it more work than ever. Uh, for those of you that might be watching this years from now, um, I'm filming this in the middle of the great Chinese virus scare of 2020. Uh, a lot of people, millions of people are told to shelter in place. Uh, theaters are shut down. Uh, libraries even are shut down. So a lot of dojos, of course, are following suit, being responsible, not you know, allowing people to come together to help spread the disease. Um, this has led to a lot of people saying, okay, how do I keep practicing? How do I keep getting better, even if I can't get to the dojo? And there's a lot of talk online about this, and a few people that are very good at heart are even talking about video instruction uh, for their students. They, they don't want to, you know, they're not the hucksters that sell DVD courses or stuff like that. They honestly want to help their students by filming themselves and then letting their students try it. And uh, no, this is not a good idea. I would like everyone to remember that Soki Hatsumi has said time and time again that you cannot learn his art from videos. Um, if, you if you have my translation of his book, uh, Togakuriru Nimpo Taijitsu, go to page 251 and towards the bottom there's a, a, a paragraph that basically ends, there's nothing but to go to a real teacher and trains as he tells you. End of story. He knows, he knows what he's talking about. Um, these are for a, a variety of reasons. One reason is um, one of my teachers in Japan basically said once that, as far as he was concerned, if he didn't do the technique on us, then he hadn't really taught us. We hadn't learned it. Uh, reason being is that you know after seeing it and feeling it, then we go off, and then one student can tell the other student, mm, that didn't feel like what Sensei did. There's something missing, and you can find out what you're missing um, and work towards it. Once you've had it done on you, and you can compare it with you know the teacher and the guy you're doing it. Uh, another one is that the first time you see something, you most times do not get everything that's there. Uh, it, go back to your training, you might remember you're doing a technique and the teacher comes over and kind of goes, um, you forgot something, you're leaving something out or something to that effect. If you're teaching, then you probably have seen plenty of students do it as well. So if they do not catch that, then practice does not make perfect, practice makes permanent. So they're practicing, they're making permanent the habit of leaving out what they missed. So instead of something new to train in, my suggestion is to train in something you've been shown at this time. Something that you went through a class, two or more classes, and the teacher doesn't correct you quite as much, but keeps adding things on. That's the type of thing you should be practicing right now. Now, there's plenty of things that you can practice that have been thrown out. I mean, uh, basic punching, hitting a makiwara, uh, uh, throwing shurikens, practicing uh, Bokata, uh, hitting things with swords, things like that, and they're all very good. But I would like to point out that you can practice things like locks and throws and other things that generally re require another person on your own. You have to imagine that you have an opponent, that you're getting offline, that you're moving them and all that. Um, but it is possible. The Japanese do it too. They don't just practice things like kicks on their own, they practice things like Gonseki Nage, solo. So, this is what you can do. Now, obviously, there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, if you're doing Mushidori solo, you would not have a partner. So basically, it would look something like this. Okay? So, not quite as good as uh, an experience as if you actually have a partner. In some ways, obviously there are just disadvantages, but there are advantages. One of the advantages is that you don't actually have to worry about a partner. You don't have to worry about a fist coming at your face. So you're free to just concentrate on what you're doing and understand what your body is doing. If you're trying to get someone, maybe you're too concentrated on them and, and you do something like this. You know, because you're, you're, you're concentrating on them and you don't know that your foot is moving ahead of the rest of your body. But if you're doing it solo, then you can realize, okay, I'm doing it like this, 
<clears throat> or am I doing it like this? Or am I doing it like this? My hand, is my hand coming up after? Or is it moving all at once? These are the type of things you can concentrate on. Also, because you don't have a partner just sitting there waiting for his turn, you can, this one move, you can get this one move down before you go on to anything else. You control everything. You control the timing, you control the speed. So you can make this all about what you are doing, which kind of gives a lot more value to when you get back to actually training with a partner. I think there should be a balance, yin and yang. I, I once, uh, one week, I kind of went through my training schedule and I, I kind of figured out that I did it about two, maybe three hours for every class I went to in Japan of just solo training like this. I think that this type of thing is really important to get good. Don't just train in the dojo. Train on your own. Train in your house. If you've got clothes that you normally wear, you know, I went, you know, I went shop to a dojo in Japan wearing like this, but this is what I actually would wear if I'm walking around the, the uh, neighborhood here. I can wear this solo training. Uh, if you got an old suit that you don't mind, maybe you like splitting the, you know, the, the pants in the back, you know, the, the trousers in the back, wear that. These are the type of things that you can take advantage of. Do not look at the weaknesses of solo training. Look at the advantages. And again, combine it with training with someone else so that when you get back, you know more about what your body's doing, so that's a default setting, so you can start worrying about how you're affecting his balance, how you're getting away from a possible punch while you're doing the techniques, things like that. This is very, very important, and I wish everyone would continue to solo train even after this scare is behind us. So, there you go. Solo training on your own. You can practice omote gyaku, whatever. You do not need a partner. You have to imagine a partner. Stay safe, wash your hands, and be excellent to each other.